Xin chào. Welcome to this vlog. Ho Chi Minh City in Southeast Asia feels like second home for me, as I lived and worked here for some period of my life. I want to share this city's vibe, introduce it to my friends, and we're also going to try food in a Soviet restaurant. Why Soviet? The answer is there is lots of Soviet heritage here. As Vietnam is one of only five remaining communist countries in the whole world. Xin chào. By the way, if you order a taxi, you get a bike and I love it. Ho Chi Minh is the largest city in Vietnam and it's a business and financial hub of the country. When you come here, don't be surprised to hear the city to be named differently by locals. Ho Chi Minh and Saigon. Saigon was the capital of French Indochina and then of South Vietnam until the fall of Saigon in 1975. Then the communist government renamed Saigon in honor of the president and the leader of the Vietnamese revolution, Ho Chi Minh. And here he is, Ho Chi Minh proudly standing in the city center or just Uncle Ho as Vietnamese call him. He's the symbol of Vietnam's unification. By the way, Ho Chi Minh traveled to Moscow to study Marxism-Leninism and then implemented those ideas here. That's why you can find so much Soviet heritage here. Well, not only Soviet, there are many French-style buildings, there is even Saigon, Notre Dame Cathedral and Ban Mi basically a French baguette. Remnants of Vietnam's colonial past. In Vietnam, not many locals speak English, but when I meet with my friend from Saigon, I don't need neither English nor Vietnamese. We have another common language. Lee говорит на русском. Вьетнамка говорит на русском. Откуда ты знаешь русский? Я училась в России. Как долго ты жила в России? Почти 15 лет. То есть ты с детства в России, да, была? А как так получилось? Мои родители работали еще в Советском Союзе. Они вьетнамцы, но они поехали в Россию работать. Вот меня с собой взяли. Кем они работали там? Отец э, начальник отряда, а мать э, переводчица. А в каком ты городе жила? В Москве. И Жили. ты полностью училась на русском, да? Да. Меня дали в школу учиться с русскими детьми. Расскажи про этот опыт. Было весело, меня все э, учителя любили, хорошо дружила с, с русскими детьми. У меня до сих пор э, друзья остались там. Почему ты скучаешь? Ой, по снегу. По снегу скучаю. Вот. У нас не хватает снега. У нас э, круглый год 30, плюс 30 градусов, а в России там а зимой минус 30 градусов. Иногда хочется поехать в Россию, попасть именно зимой на, на санках покататься, на коньках покататься, на лыжах. So why is this place famous? Because uh, here, here is our history, history about war, Vietnamese war. So long time it was Vietnamese war in Vietnam between uh, Vietnam and uh, America. Here, here is uh, the solar base, solar space, base uh, of uh, Vietnamese. They used to work here, eat here, and live here, but not on the ground, they are under the ground. Underground base? Yes. Okay. Can you find an entrance of the underground base? Can you find the it? entrance is here? Yes. Um, yeah, maybe this place? Can you guess? Maybe here? Yeah. Whoa! You're right. <laughs> You're right. <laughs> I found it. Yeah, but very small. Okay, here is the entrance. 
Okay, пока, пока. Bye bye, bye bye. This entrance is very small. Like you need to be very skinny. <laughs> yeah. How are you there? For how long was the American war and why it started? So nearly, nearly 30 years. It called Vietnamese War. The end of the war in 1975. Let's start because in, in Vietnam we were separate. So uh, South Vietnam and North Vietnam. North Vietnam with uh, Ho Chi Minh and uh, it was um, to have an uh, ideal of communists and in the South Vietnam they had I ideal of uh, capitals that's why uh, in South Vietnam ask the help of America and America give the help uh, they give uh, South Vietnam a lot of weapons they give uh, South Vietnam a lot of soldiers from, uh, from America, from uh, uh, Australia, South Korea Philippines, like that. So they go to Vietnam to strike with the North Vietnamese. Here is the trap. It's very dangerous trap. It was before for animals, but in the war, it used for American soldiers. It's hard. See? There was lots of aerial bombing, so the North Vietnamese and Viet Cong uh, made these tunnels not only for shelter, but also to continue their guerrilla tactics. And they could spend months under these tunnels. Wow, this is so narrow <laughs> and low and dark. These tunnels were basically dug with hands most of the time, so a very short distance one at a time. And imagine they dug it for 250 kilometers. Unbelievable. I'm too tired. After just uh, 20 meters underground. But before, all people of Kochi village live underground. Can you imagine it? I cannot. It's too hot, too dark. <laughs> what was there? It was uh, a lot of uh, living room, stores, hospital, many, many rooms underground. No, I can't imagine either. It's so hot there. Also, it takes lots of effort just to walk, to crawl. I'm all <laughs> sweaty. And you know, Regular citizens, regular people never want any of this, like any of this. And someone makes them fight for some crazy ideas. So here they show what people, soldiers ate during the war. And basically it's a rice paper, which is made like this. And then everything is dried out here and now here you can buy these things like rice paper with bananas with sesame and stuff and this is the alcohol that soldiers drank like rice wine banana vodka and more rice vodka i guess what's that green tea with the pineapple leaves and here is manioca is it a fruit no here is manioca like a potato i put this in oh. peanuts yeah peanut with uh, sugar and salt mm. it's a sweet potato yeah yeah it's called manioca and keep long time underground yeah. nearly you can keep nearly one year Mm. Тебе легче говорить на русском или на английском? Мне на русском легче. А в Вьетнаме все учат сейчас английский, да? Везде, да. В Вьетнаме учат иностранный язык в школе обязательный, да, вот английский язык. Но раньше, раньше в школах учили русском. Но это до 
2000-х годов. Всего в мире пять коммунистических стран. То есть, по сути, это очень необычный опыт вырасти и жить в коммунистической стране. Как ты считаешь, ну вот ты жила в России тоже, чем тут жизнь отличается а, при таком экономическом строе? У нас тут, в принципе, все хорошо. Страна развивается, экономика развивается, государство позволяет людям бизнес развивать. Коммунизм — это равенство, да? И как ты считаешь, здесь действительно чувствуется вот это равенство или есть такое, что есть супербогатые, супербедные, или смогли добиться вот этого, вот этой коммунистической идеи равенства? У нас рыночная экономика. Кто лучше торгует, да, или кто лучше свой бизнес делает, то он, естественно, богаче, чем других. Как ты считаешь, Вьетнам быстро развивается и легко ли здесь делать именно бизнес, быть индивидуальным предпринимателем? Да, очень много индивидуальных предпринимателей. Они развиваются, они ведут свой бизнес. Сейчас вот уже видно туристические районы, курорты. Приезжают открывать бизнес в Вьетнаме иностранцы. Везде рассказывают о войне, о войне между Вьетнамом и Америкой, о войне между Вьетнамом и Францией. Но это уже все закончилось почти 50 лет назад. И сейчас все это не влияет на отношения между людьми, между вьетнамцами и американцами или французами. I'm back in the city. I was walking and then I saw this. I can't just pass by, right? I expected to see lots of Russian souvenirs, maybe food, but it's basically lots of warm clothes that we do need in winter in Russia. But <laughs> why do you need this? in Vietnam. Hi, why do you need this warm clothes in Vietnam? Everybody uh, go uh, to Russia. Europe. <laughs> so basically it's a market of warm clothes. Yes. If you go abroad somewhere. Yeah. Mm. Why it's named Russian market? Uh, this only the name. The name. The name. Mm. Many customers from Russia buy here. Oh, okay. Yeah. So after my investigation i learned that the russian market in ho chi minh city appeared after the dissolution of the ussr when russia started uh, reforms and faced a crisis the prices in russia escalated dramatically and there was an increased demand from the russians for clothes and life necessities and making use of the situation the vietnamese who studied or worked in russia at that time brought things from ho chi minh to russia to sell and make profits later the demand for russian goods also experienced a rise in Ho Chi Minh City and this market appeared in 2000 and it's still here. Another interesting thing that I heard, maybe it's a myth, maybe not, but they say that people here, the sellers, speak Russian or somehow connected to Russia. Let's check. Здравствуйте. А вы говорите по-русски? Привет. Нет? Здравствуйте. А вы говорите по-русски? Мне сказали, что тут продавцы говорят на русском. Здравствуйте. Откуда вы знаете русский? Я там учила. А в каком городе? Я в Иркутске. А как вы выучили русский? Я сама учила. В институте учили 9 месяцев, а потом работала 4 года. Вам нравилось жить в Иркутске? Да, очень люблю. Холодно было? Очень сильно холодно. Очень приятно. Вам тоже так. Пока-пока. Давай, My friend is there. Hey, Kiki! Wait, how do you want to be introduced on YouTube? I know. We always sing these songs. Kiki, do you love me? 
so you are Kiki for me, but maybe you want to be known differently on YouTube. Tell yeah, my real name is K. Duk Mahat. You know how to pronounce that. Duk. Duk. Yeah. Your first time to try Russian food? Yeah, first time. What do you expect? It looks like European food. Uh, I know it's, it looks like British or French. Maybe. You will see. By the way, they gave him a menu in Vietnamese here uh -huh. and to me in Russian. Yeah, I, I think this one is Russian. This one is Chinese. It's not Chinese, it's Pilmeni. <laughs> really? You have this one in Russian? He says that this food looks very Chinese uh -huh. or European, yeah. but I will choose the most Russian dishes for him and then you will see his reaction. By the way, my friend is a businessman. He makes these t-shirts. I think this is funny. It's funny, yes. Never seen uh, anyone make cat t-shirts What is this one? What is this CC? CCCB. CCCB? Oh. What, what is that? <laughs> it, is that English it's or SSSR. Russian? It's SSSR. Is that English or Russian? It's Russian. It stands for the USSR? Yes! Yes! We start with puree, which is just mashed potatoes. But Kiki said that he has never tried it. How is it? How is it possible that a try person it. never tried mashed potatoes? I try it at KFC. And, uh... KFC? This is what we eat in the kindergarten and at school and in Stalove and all the time. Okay. I need more salt on this one. <laughs> Sauce? Yeah. And uh, salt, maybe pepper. Okay, for me, it doesn't seem plain. It has a very... Uh, bright taste for me. How many points out of ten? Seven. Kampot. Typical one. We have this uh, from all over the world. Kampot is a very common beverage made of berries, fruits, sometimes dried fruits. I think it's good. It's not too sweet. Also, he never tried black bread, which is so so popular in Russia. It's a uh, rye bread actually. And you will try it with uh, borscht. Yeah. Have you ever heard about this famous? Never, never. The taste. I never tasted the Thai taste before. It changed to me. How many points out of ten for черный хлеб? Five. Five out of ten. What about it borscht? It to five also. Five out of ten. Comfort. Eight. Eight out of ten. Pelmeni. We need more salt on this one also. <laughs> you need more salt? I, I need a lot of salt. So they seem too plain? Yeah, like no taste. It's uh, 6 out of 10. What do you like the most so far? I don't know. Maybe I'm not suitable for European uh, food. Add more salt and uh, smell in the food. For me, everything has enough, so I see that it tastes good. But I... many foreign people like Russian food, but maybe for Asians, it, it is so different. Like, yeah, we have less different. spices, less salt. So, he said that Russian food feels like he's on a diet. Yeah, there is no sugar, no salt, no seasoning, <laughs> no seasoning. Can't take it anymore. So, this is Sirnik made of cottage cheese and it's my favorite breakfast in Russia. This is smetana, which is sour cream, so you get this and dip and eat. It's familiar to me, the taste. Eight out of ten. Eight out of ten for Sirniki. Okay. Overall, I would say not bad. Some dishes are really like, I'm in Russia again. What's your verdict? Okay, to be honest, I will say I can live in Europe. Uh, you can't live? I can't take Europe, European no, dishes. Because uh, I eat a lot of food and in my daily life, I take a lot of salt and sugar and sour taste. They didn't have enough seasoning 
for Asen. By the way, I have a tradition on my channel to hide Russian matryoshka dolls in places that I visit. Inside there is a note from me and this time 100,000 Vietnamese dong. In Ho Chi Minh you will find it at the restaurant named USSR. Just tell the staff the name of my channel and they will give you the doll. I'm very excited for you to visit one of my most favorite cities of the world and try my favorite food. When you find it, make a picture and tag my Instagram. Good luck! Be honest, I'm done. You're done? Yeah. <laughs> It was a lot of tasty food. I think it's time to burn those calories and go for a walk to show you other parts of Ho Chi Minh. This area, Vinh Homs Central Park, was named the most livable urban area in Ho Chi Minh City in terms of the landscape, location, facilities. You can find a new restaurant, food here, there are swimming pools. This building is the highest building in Vietnam, landmark 81. Inside there is even an ice rink. Vin Home Central Park project is worth 1.5 billion US dollars and I think Ho Chi Minh or at least areas like this break your ideas about Asia which is wrongly all of it stereotyped as poor. Uh, xin chào, dua. Yeah. Dua. By the way, the first time when I came to Ho Chi Minh City was right after I graduated from university in Moscow. All my groupmates were finding jobs in an office and I knew with all my body and mind that I didn't want to go that way. I knew that I wanted to travel, this thing I knew for sure, to explore new cultures, so I found a job in Vietnam because it's a new culture, I've never been to Asia. And this job as a teacher gave me really good money and I was spending very little. So it was that year when I was able to save money, to start my YouTube channel, to do what I love. So thank you Ho Chi Minh City for giving me this opportunity. I'm very grateful to this city. Ho Chi Minh is about diversity. Looking at it from surface, it may seem like a common Asian metropolis with crazy traffic jams, beefing motorbikes, screaming people and weird smelling food. Well, it's all true. But if you dig deeper, you'll see that if people beep or shout something, they're still smiling sincerely. And if you try the local cuisine, it turns out to be very delicious. Life in this city is not what you see it at first sight. Someone will say that living in this huge metropolis is pressure. And others will say that these are opportunities. Есть возможность путешествовать по миру, и тут климат такой хороший, почему бы приезжать в какую-то страну? Speaking of Ho Chi Minh, I can definitely say that each its inhabitant can create a life that he wants to have. Guys, if you like this video, it would really help me with the YouTube algorithms and to create more videos for my channel. Thanks a lot for watching.